we're now live. Okay. Um, right. So, um, yeah, it's really great to finally connect. Um, you know, we've been we've been really excited seeing like how you guys have been using RTSVP and like you know you've, you've given us such nice feedback. And actually, it's it's uh, like I don't want to upset like our UK based clients, but anyone like American seems much more like excited generally about what we're doing. Um, hmm. I don't know if you know Stacey McCormick, um, who runs Unit One Gallery Workshop. She's oh, also yes, yes, yeah. she's also uh, American and she's like has the same kind of levels of enthusiasm as you and it's that there's quite actually quite a lot of similarities between what both of you guys are doing regarding oh, wow. um i mean she's an artist who runs a gallery and has now launched an app um which is designed to make like buying and selling art more direct to artist um mm -hmm. which is doing really well but i think it's a similar i think you guys would share a lot of interest in terms of um just like the way you see, I mean, I'm only looking from afar, having kind of seen your website and kind of read about you a bit, but um, the way you're kind of doing these studio, like open studios and uh, residencies and kind of a whole bunch of other stuff rather than just, just doing your own art. And I think that that's like quite exciting when I look at some of the, some of the galleries out there, obviously you've got the kind of central London ones, very commercial. And then like, and then actually there's this kind of periphery of slightly more kind of of like a, a I guess like um, there's a bit of a cycle with some of the smaller gallery studio spaces where there's like a proper ecosystem and I think like that's what like I'm excited when we are like working with um, you know when we see some like you guys have actually really put put, put kind of art SVP like you're using a lot of the features that we've built without a lot of hand holding from us. So it's like, it's nice to see that some of the features that we've built, maybe for the, the likes of like even freeze, um, you guys are using. And I think that like for us, it's really exciting that um, to kind of, to try and to try and like allow everyone to operate on the same level with the same level of professionalism and trying to, you know, trying to, uh, just make it so people can operate more efficiently with like limited budgets or limited staff, et cetera, et cetera. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's, that's kind of more just general blurby intro, I guess. Um, but um, well, the, the professionalism part and all that, I mean, you just, I mean, that was, I'm sure we'll get to this. So we're sort of cart before the horse, but the, the thing that, that had the reason that I, that I found you was because I went to, I don't know, was Saatchi or somewhere. Not, it wasn't even then it was, a. Uh, Maybe it was into the Royal Academy, and and they, wherever I was going, they they were using your your art SVP. And my friend actually uh, Graham uh, Martin, who's who's an artist and an RCA graduate, had um, just opened a place called Trafalgar Avenue, which is also an artist led, artist run, sp beautiful space. He's completely redone this gorgeous house, you know, um, closer to Central, and he was using the art SVP also. And I just thought okay, this is a professional tool and it is, um, it helps so much when you, especially with everything that we were going through with everything needing to be closed and needing to be booked and needing to be timetabled. And I just, I, I don't have, honestly, I don't have the bandwidth, you know, to manage my own calendar, let alone to run a, a, an event space and be a working artist. So when I found you guys, and I just I bit the bullet. Basically, I was like, well, if we're going to do this, then we have to we have to do it in a way that it's sustainable. And and having that the like flexible booking tool was huge. It was huge. Yeah. Well, yeah, it actually has changed the way that the space is the way that we're seeing the space and the way that the space is sort of evolving because of our use of your um, well, of your system. But also, I think because you personally were so open with us, you know, like I'm new, I moved here a year and a couple of months ago and, um, and my studio manager just happened to be the girl that was living above the shop where I opened the gallery <laughs> and she has a huge amount of management experience, but she's from Hungary and English isn't her first language and she's not in the art world. 
So the fact that you guys in your in your customer support were just like, no worries, here's how you do it. There was just no gatekeeping and no barrier to entry at all. So mm. we felt really welcomed onto this sophisticated platform. You know, yeah, well, obviously I sophisticated <laughs> is, 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 is a strong word, but um, I mean, what's been fantastic for us has been like, I mean, that's obviously something we pride ourselves on, but really, you know, the value that we get back from that is so huge that mm. um, we, I mean, we only launched this in June, 2020. So just, just as the lockdown ended, we came up with the idea and we kind of had to launch it within five days when like galleries were allowed to reopen. And like ever we since used then, for my, uh, for my grand opening party, cause we were like, oh, we can open. How do we do this? Same yeah. Thing. yeah. Yeah. So you've probably seen the development, but I mean, so much of what we've done has really been based on like feedback from everyone, from you, like every single client, you know, we kind of, what we try to do, I mean, we, we aren't coming up with any cool ideas anymore. We, we're just like, <laughs> we just listen and then we just go, okay, like enough people have said they need this. So then let's, let's build it. But, um, like we can't get stuff out quick enough, but at the same time, it's like good to kind of wait until we've heard about something maybe two or three times before we say okay yeah let's build this because there are lots and lots of unique scenarios so it's kind of trying to work out what is the lowest common denominator and like what's like people say they want one thing but actually maybe there's another way to do it and so that right. that's that's kind of more the challenges that we're working on on a day-to-day -day basis but um it's it's like when we see people like use like tools that we've released without us telling them about it because we don't we haven't had time to really tell people what's going on we're trying to do that more and more now and hence the launch of the blog where we can kind of share some of the stories on a more one-to-many basis rather than a one-to-one -one over phone calls um we're, we're trying to work out like how can we be like hey this is like for example and i think we'll get into this oh uh, you know this is kate this is how kate operated her grand opening these were the big like this is the benefits, you know, that she got from it, not that we're saying you could get from it, you know, and I think that that's a much more powerful story for us. Um, and I think that that's really, like, we've, we've been kind of slowly moving through, but it's it's what we've built, I think, does much, much more than just allow booking, like booking is kind of the, 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 the thing, like, I'm the booking guy, right. But it's much, much more like interesting to like think about like why, like what are the actual benefits of it? Yes, like a lot of people had to implement booking for COVID, but um, I think the benefits to the, to galleries and to studios and to even individual artists go far beyond just like it being a barrier to entry. I think if you, you know, I think we're, we're pushing to make it like less of a barrier at every point, but knowing like who's coming, being able to prepare, like if it's a small, uh, like one-on-one -on -one visit and being able to prepare for that, knowing what time people are coming, knowing that like automatic reminder emails are sent and people will call up if they can't make it. Like that does everything from saving people time um, in terms of like turning up at the studio when nobody's going to turn up potentially. But, but from that all the way through to like after bookings, being able to kind of do a little bit of analysis, see who's come. And actually that, that to me is the more exciting bit is I think that like knowing your audience is really, really critical and being able to kind of from the beginning, like inviting people through to them coming, maybe checking them in so you know who actually came and then being able to potentially follow up or in a more kind of professional manner and like slightly more systematized. It just like puts a little bit of order in an otherwise you know, pretty chaotic world. I think you're, I think that, while your service is called a booking service, what it really is, is like um, interpersonal relationship building tool. Really, I mean- Okay, like we're gonna steal that. <laughs> it's because all businesses are, I mean, everything is run on relationships. This is my my feeling about the world is that the world is nothing but, but our connections that we make in it. And so for me, uh, like your the the booking tool is the last like when I inevitably run out of money. <laughs> yeah. Oh wait, that happened. <laughs> it's an art studio, yay! Yeah. <laughs> but the last thing that's gonna go is the booking link. You know what I mean? So it's never gonna go. Don't panic. Um, but <laughs> but the reason is is because um, 
it, it does all those things that you said, but that's it's more than just saying like, okay, at its basis level, I'm like, I have 80 people signed up for this show, for this PV. Wow, I had no idea we were going to have more than 20 people. I'll buy more gin. I mean, that's... <laughs> yeah. No, and I think, I think that that's a really important point, and lots of people do miss this, but um, like even for like oversubscribed shows happening in Mayfair potentially where, you know, they just get the footfall. What there's, there's something that is really being missed by quite a few major galleries, which is like knowing like who's coming and mm -hmm. it, it also allows you to gauge, like, even if you know you're going to be full every, every time you do a private view, being able to like mm -hmm. send out a link and gauge the response to even your own marketing like this is something that many, many galleries are not doing. So you can send out an email and see like nobody booked. Okay. And I mean, that's obviously maybe depressing, but it, it, it shows maybe we don't really necessarily know the exact reasons. It could show that people are, you know, scared COVID wise at different points over the last year. It could show that just that, that email didn't appeal to people. And also, I mean, if you're, if you have somebody on your team, like you're saying the studio manager, it, it's good for them to get a feedback loop when they send out a marketing newsletter rather than just being like, hey, private view in two weeks time and everyone just being like, I wonder who's coming. It's nice to be like, yes. oh, we've at least got some initial interest. Well, and what's really interesting about it is that after all of the, I mean, we use it for everything. We use it, we don't just use it for huge shows. You know, we use it for, we use it for every, everything because we want our yeah. money's worth. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> no, just, but the, the thing that's amazing is, yeah, it's not only who's coming um, as far as like numbers, but like you said, like, do we have art, an art writer is coming? Oh my gosh, they booked, you know, or, or some collectors that, you know, are coming. So, and it's not just about, and then I can, I can tell the artists that are showing here, you know, Ooh, we have these people signed up or I can also tell them numbers wise, um, you know, you guys only had, you know, this many people sign up. Um, you should really push it on Instagram. Perhaps you need to say this, like I can look at their blurb and our more successful blurbs and see what's the difference. I also use it integrated through MailChimp, which is my mm. newsletter thing so that I can tweak the, the headline. I mean, there's all kinds of yeah. things, but the thing that's amazing about it for me is that, um, the, uh, I can tell, okay, so I can see my business growing basically. And I can see your, your service is showing me that my personal connection to the, um, thanks love <laughs> that my personal connection to the community is really vital to my business. And the, it's funny to call it a business because it's not a business. It's, it's a, I mean, my, my personal art practice there. Yeah. My personal art practice is a business, but uh, when I, what I'm doing here is I'm just opening my space up and allowing artists, which I'm sure we'll talk about more, yeah. but um, allowing artists from several different tiers to show uh, back to back so that I have sort of a, a sine wave that comes across the artistic community. And so we had, and I'm in Hampton Wick, I'm near Kingston. Mm -hmm. So I'm not in central and that's so I can have bigger space. And because I was researching Turner when I found this space and he was down here and not up there. So <laughs> that's how it happened. But it's amazing to me because um, even though I'm a tiny little space that nobody really knows about, you know, we, we, use this booking link and then helped the and we have the qr code on the outside of our building and what we found out is that the community is really sort of desperate for a place to connect and that there is an enormous number of <laughs> an enormous number of people who are looking for a place that's not a pub and they're looking for a place that's not um a scary um sort of um I don't know, Some, like somewhere that's of, just like welcoming to like engage with, re-engage with like the community yeah, well, and like do something different. Look at, yeah, exactly. I mean, so, well, I, I mean, I can tell you this. I'm segueing into telling you a little bit about this. So why don't I? Uh, I'll let you. <laughs> ask well, no, no. Question. I mean, actually, I mean, just on that. I mean, the the questions I sent over were more for just to give us something to fall back on. But I think I think what you're saying is like it's something that resonates with me. I mean. Um, when I was 20, I set up a business called Tomax Talks, and that was similar to TED Talks, but 
like slightly more curated. So we would do like a talk about art within a gallery or we do a talk about um, sport in a pub or, you know, we'd like mix the venue to suit. Yeah. But the very much like our approach was what, what you were just saying is that people want some, a, a different space to like socialize. And I think one of the, you know, also having run um, Seb's art list, you know, our whole thing is like, rather than just meeting at the pub after work for a pint, it's great. But like, it's nice to, I've certainly found it's really nice to take people to private views and use them as like a social thing. And I think that that's like the key thing is about bringing people together at the end of the day. Yeah. And that's what was yeah. so like, so kind of awful about um, like COVID lockdown one was just like online events were just like yeah. re replacing stuff. But it was just like, I mean, another online event and I would have, yeah, really lost it. So I think... I think it just, you can't replace, like, especially seeing art in the first person. I mean, I'm on your website. I've never actually been down to the studio. I will come. Um, but it's like, I can't get a sense of it on, like, an online viewing room until you can no. see it up close or see the texture or see the light. And more importantly, I think, it's to, like, reflect off, like, how other people are looking at it. When you see other people's faces when they look at art, that that's important. Um, yeah. And yeah. so I, I, think, I think that you know, that's a really interesting point. And I think like, I think that that's, is really gelling and showing that you're open to letting people come in is really important, mm -hmm. especially at this time. And it's, I mean, it's an opportunity to say like, hey, we are like open and we have some system in place to kind of maybe manage that. It's like kind of the icing on the cake, but not, that's not the important thing. Being open is more important, I think. But another thing you, you just touched upon was like how, like, I mean, Maybe if we go back to the fact that you said you've been here for like a year and a half or um, Not like even. I was doing it last. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, <laughs> yeah. So not even. Um, yeah. So, I mean, how, so you, I mean, I, I did a little bit of background on you and you've kind of done quite an, you've got quite a, quite a diverse like CV by the looks of things, like everything from kind of like ski instructor, I think I read at some point, right. Ski instructor. Um, to well to now artists I'll skip everything in between but I'm sure there were various degrees and whatnot but now now that you've like come to London um I mean what what was the what was the draw to London and also like what when you decided to make this move I mean is this the first kind of open studio space that you've done I'm just trying to understand like was that the goal or was that just like how it turned out <laughs> It was a total surprise. Everything is a surprise and an accident in my world, which is fine with me. Well, not everything, but almost. I, um, yeah, I was living in Aspen, Colorado. I had um, worked for the Aspen Skiing Company for 13 years as a trainer and an examiner and a professional mount ski mountaineer. So uh, I was a painter before that. So my mom was a painter. My dad was an opera singer. I grew up in the theater and the studio and and then at some point I went and and became a ski instructor because reasons that we don't have time to get into. Yeah. And um, <laughs> yeah, in 2018, I got cancer and um, which is OK. And uh, I had to stop skiing. And so I went back to school um, and I and I did a degree in art history, um, having been a painter previously. Mm. So I have always loved the London School of Painting. I have always been a huge fan of, of many London painters. I knew that I really wanted to leave America to, um, to sort of shake up my education and my exposure. I really, um, I had left my own art practice for financial reasons once. And ironically, my mother had done the same thing when she was young and she had kids and she didn't come back to her mm. art practice. So um, in a mad determination to break the cycle, I applied to the Royal College of Art and um, and got in and was shocked. Um, so I told my family, like, well, here we the, go again. The whole first part was like, let's just see if we get in and see what happens and then we'll solve the problem. And then I That my signal or technical difficulties this is in... oh i think <laughs> i think your wi-fi i think it might be your wi-fi is 
It is. I've got the little beep on mine. Weak outgoing connection. I don't know. I, okay, you, I got. Okay to, I got to. So you basically got got into the RA, and that was like, oh, okay. Now, like, destiny has been kind of, and so then, and then RCA, you. RCA. Oh, sorry, the RCA. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the RCA, and then, um, and then you basically came over, and then were you immediately like looking for a space or? Um... No, what happened was we moved. We rented a place sight unseen from America because COVID then happened. So we moved during the pandemic. We moved in August um, in between the lockdowns. Mm -hmm. And um, I, we were living in Clapham and we had just found a place that was close to the Royal College because my studio was supposed to be there. Right. But uh, the Royal College didn't open. So we were living in Clapham, spending a huge amount of money you know, mm. hoping to be close to the galleries and everything and having this idea that I was going to really need to commit to going to private views four nights a week and doing all this stuff, which is because I have um, I have like a they made a mistake with the with the radiation. So I have a chronic health condition, which makes it tough for me to go out mm. more than like once every other week. So I was like, we were really situating ourselves to be right there and then everything closed. So yeah. I was looking for just a space to work. I was working in the living room and in our house in Clapham. And uh, I found a space on Lavender Hill that was like 300 square feet. And, it, and I was researching my dissertation. So I was walking around down here at the, uh, along the banks of the Arcadian Thames where um, Turner had painted and he had built a house. And um, I just loved it. I loved it out here. And I walked by this like decrepit antiques workshop, which is 2000 square feet for the same price that I was going to get 300 square feet in Clapham. And I was like, okay, everything is closed. I have no idea how long this is going to last. I don't think it's going to be short. I need a studio. I can't paint in my living room. My practice is large and expansive mm. and it includes um i you know it includes installations and all kinds of different you know i have aspects of theater and so i just it just wasn't working and so um yeah i found this space and the the landlord um it was crazy the whole space was full of like broken antiques and like floor to ceiling it was raining in this room there was no um this here we go i'll give you a little yeah. tour of just the room i'm in right now this beauty yeah. was um, sitting in the courtyard uh, in pieces, just covered in, you know, rust. So I didn't know that I was going to turn it into a making space. I mean, into a, a gallery space or anything like that or an exhibition space. I was just looking for a place to work. Hmm. So I just started in the back room with a lead running from the street. And over time, the landlord and I, you know, he like gave me just this little bit because he needed somebody in. And the shop in the front was separate. And then uh, we had a discussion with John Slice, one of the senior tutors at the Royal College of Art, who's a, a really accomplished writer. And he's been in the art world for a long time. And um, he's, he's a very uh, giving and talented person. And he spent a lot of time talking to us about what, what normally we would be doing and challenging us to think about how the art world must change. And so for me, that year, hmm. that whole first bit of lockdown, just in Zoom with my tutors, him and Jonathan Miles uh, was my, my other tutor is a philosopher who was talking about, you know, this is an epoch, right? This is a moment in time when, when everything is sort of being squeezed and there's a huge rupture and then everything changes. Hmm. And I decided to just kind of believe that. Yeah. I decided to just buy into it. I was like, okay. I, as a framework for my practice, which now includes living in this decrepit antiques place with no electricity. So do you, live, like we're you, you don't Peter live there practice. as well, do you? No, I, I now live about four minute walk away. Okay, okay. So you got out um, of Clapham. I felt like I lived here. <laughs> um, I mean, but it, seriously. That's, that's, like, that's like the, when, when lockdown one happened, so this is before you moved, this is in when, whenever that was, March. 
Um, yeah. One of the first things I did was I basically set up a, a Google Doc, like an open Google Doc, and I just started like, and this is before lockdown had actually come in, and I was just documenting live as galleries were shutting down, and this Google Doc kind of had it went kind of semi-viral, and people would just email me, and we just update and be like, this gallery shut, this gallery shut, this gallery shut, and it Whoa. in about two days, like this, it, it it kind of was designed to basically help like share share information between the galleries. But basically, it kind of led to them all shutting. Um, but um, it was just this, and I was just trying to pull you everyone. The art world. Yeah, I was just trying to kind of pull everyone together. I tried to set up a Slack group, but immediately, like you know, we spent probably the first two months. We were running an event listing company, Seb's Art List, which is now back up and running, and. Mm -hmm. Like there were no events, so we were thinking like, what do we do? You know, like how do we stay relevant? Like we we've got nothing. Our website is like literally empty. It was like a listing site, so there was so much conversation we were having. But we, I, I mean, I was always fairly excited because what I thought was one of the most exciting things was for artists. I mean, artists are entrepreneurs, like kind of by definition. You know, they're struggling on their own. And actually, one of the hardest things for any kind of entrepreneur or anyone starting up something is finding like other people who've got time to give input and have a feedback loop. And like another thing, like another thought I had was creatives, especially are often going from like job to job, paycheck to paycheck. And there's never a time where like their 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 like gaps overlapped. So you'd have like my sister's an artist and like all of her friends, but it was like, when did they ever have time where they all didn't have something going on, where they could all go sit, like sit down together or get on a Zoom call and like organize yeah. themselves? Um, and I think that that's like something that's really interesting. And I think that there's like suddenly there was this change in everyone's kind of head, even even back then. But certainly with people like yourself who are, you know, opening these spaces and doing things that are slightly more interesting than just saying, oh, I have a space and a one day a week it's open. It's like, yeah getting that feedback Which loop is it key. really that that feedback loop is exactly it because it's that's the relationship and and going back to you know our first statement everything everything runs by relationships it's we're having this conversation because you and i chatted over the chat box when yeah. i was trying to get you know what i mean we made a we made a relationship and then you connected yeah. you know we're so kind to connect with veronica like a human like a person and that's really I mean, for me, as I was sitting in here by myself in this huge amount of space, at first it was obviously not hospitable, but we had these windows in the front. So I asked, it's like a, you know, it's like a regular storefront. I asked the the landlord if we could just stick some art in the windows, because one of the things that Slice, uh, John Slice was telling us was, you know, that it's very important that we continue to show together, that we curate small shows, even if nobody comes just to to have the practice of coming together however we can, you know, and, and doing what we could with what we had. And so we did a windows exhibition here and um, it was really interesting because I don't, I never had the game that I never had the aim of opening a gallery. I'm not trying to run yeah. a gallery, <laughs> you know, I, um, what I want to do is give artists opportunity to take risk with low consequence. So it's scary. And that became, that was clear from the very beginning. How to do it was less clear, but it has become clear. Um, and it was like, the idea was that we're, for a really vital practice, it should always be at the edge of risk. There's an mm. old saying in yoga and in skiing that balance is found on the edge of risk, right? So when you're, we're in, whenever you're in a place where you're, where you're balanced, if you move just a little bit one way or the other, you'll fall and fail. Yeah. But the balance is a really beautiful moment. And so when I think about that, as far as artists pushing themselves to, I don't know, get off the stretcher as a painters or use new materials, or I don't even know what it is, whatever it is your thing is, it's really difficult when you're making in a small shutdown studio, you don't have access to other people or other input. And, um, and then say you hire a space or you get into a group show somewhere, the, the personal willingness to take the risk to push the work in that opportunity that you have is so tricky to, to get because it when we get those opportunities, 
on the one hand, we want to show our best work that we know is going to be received well because the opportunities are few and far between. On the other hand, we want to take the opportunity to, to break and push and expand our practice as much as possible. So that's actually what this space is, is it's mm. a place where you can kind of go, I know, ta-da! Mm. And then you can go, oh shit, I hope nobody saw that. <laughs> you know? Then because we're in Hampton Wick, maybe nobody did, but maybe people did because we actually have quite a... Quite yeah. A, the other thing that really has become really clear to me after doing, I don't know, we've done 20 events here now? 20, uh, you know, in the... Yeah, I've got, since, your, since I've got your dashboard up here and uh, i'm looking there's about yeah there's 20 everything from like poetry club mondays um like various openings open studios um uh i mean like general booking and now these workshops as well um yes which which yes is, is we that... had a gong bath we had somebody come in and do a gong bath here <laughs> like um yeah we have um Basically, it's a reflection. So my 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 aunt uh, was a, a painter. It, well, she was a lousy painter, but she loved painting. And she in Laguna Beach, she um, she's not with us anymore. My um, father's side of my family is 22 years older than my mother's side of the family. So my dad was much older than my mom. So they came from this very um, cocktail culture sort of she she kind of was a painter in the 40s and 50s um and then she was holding these salons in the 60s and 70s in her like funky cool beach pad in laguna beach and in the early 70s okay. i i was born in 71. yeah so when i was a kid when i was like five and six years old in the early 70s I remember every Sunday being at my aunt's house because her salon was every Sunday and there were painters and philosophers and actors and writers and the whole house was rearranged and hung with new stuff, tapestries and sculptures in the middle of the room, people playing the piano. And um, it, they would eventually just turn into, you know, drunken cocktail parties. But of course, the, the part, of course, as, as all good gatherings do. Um, but I sort of am modeling this space on how I felt at her home, mm. which was welcome, even though I was six. You know, mm. the the grownups <laughs> would would talk to me and listen to my opinion. Um, and so when I when I think about growing this space, I think about her doors were open. The next door neighbor that didn't know anything about art would come over and have a smashing time. The cranky old man down the street with the yappy dog would come without his dog and would have a good time. And somebody that was opening on Broadway, you know, in two weeks was mm. coming through Laguna Beach and would be sitting there having a cocktail. So it was this very democratic group of people. And the thing that brought them together was just that they really enjoyed talking about art yeah. and, and in all its permutations. They wanted to be near it. They wanted to think about it and they wanted to talk about it while drinking <laughs> um, and in relax. a way that made them, yeah, like yeah, in a way that made them feel, the other kind of aspects of their life, which are often quite regimented. Yes, and, and not, I think, crucially, really not to feel pressured that they were performing in that moment. So the space, and I, I just was having a conversation with an artist who's going to show here um, in January. And she's, she's come to a couple of our openings and she said the thing that she really loves about coming here is that she doesn't feel like she's performing. She doesn't feel like she has to have the right answer about the art or show her smartest ability to talk. She can actually sit down on the couch because there's chairs here and there's <laughs> not in regular galleries. She can sit down and relax and fall into a conversation, you know, with a local poet who's actually internationally published mm. who happened to be sitting near her you know and was just to her was just steve yeah you know, for, or for, whatever and for, i mean from what you're i mean you you strike me as like i mean you've got like an amazing energy and like i think like like that that balance is found on the edge of risk i think that that was like a like really sums up kind of your your approach like navigating this thing but i like yeah. it feels to me like you know maybe it was an advantage coming from like from the US because just that like having to basically make decisions I think this is often where like everybody gets stuck is basically like a plethora of choice but 
yeah having a pandemic having um like be, being a new you know being a being in a new city and all of this stuff I mean in a weird way it, it sounds to me like it's played to your advantage because you've had to just like navigate from one ski to another so to speak and then now you found this space and it's like slowly developing rather than basically the approach of going, oh, I want to open a gallery. Oh, what does a gallery look like? Google gallery and it being like a white box with some paintings and, you know, a desk with an iMac on it and somebody when you walk in who kind of looks at you and judges you like that's, yes, exactly. that's this is not that. <laughs> exactly. And, and I think I think like that's that that would suddenly be like a. a it doesn't have that organic feel where you actually are learning and like working out like what does make people feel comfortable. And I think what you're describing about like the, the house in Laguna beach. And I mean, I I've certainly grown up in similar kind of settings where essentially it's surrounded by artists. My mum's an artist, my aunt's an artist, my sister's an artist, my cousin's a tailor, like everyone does, you know, does various stuff. And I, I I'm the least artistic. I mean, I've got a painting I did here, but, um, this is my old bedroom. We all need you, Max. We all need you. Yeah, I'm like the the one trying to kind of put some structure. But um, I think I think that that's really also very interesting. Is about making people feel comfortable, and especially as we come out of this, um, come out of this year where like a lot of people, you know, for some people it's been a kind of an amazing year because of I think of this focus, the less distractions, has and the collabor collaboration and people being able to break the mold. And you're certainly one of those people. But then for others, it's been quite a lonely, like nervous time. And actually coming back into spaces and coming back into, um, yeah, social scenarios even. It's, 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 it's not something where you can just click your finger and then just go, boom, like party time. It's people want to yeah, have that approach and be able to, you know, come to maybe come to your gallery, like for an opening or if they want a quieted moment they can book, book an appointment to, to do a one-on-one -on -one kind of drop in. Um, I mean, yeah. kind of just to kind of go back a little bit to that, um, you, you know, you've, you've, you, you set up the, you set up the studio um, and very quickly you were, I mean, how, how quickly into that were you going, Oh, like, I mean, was it, you had too, you had so much space. You were like, we could definitely have other artists in here. We could definitely do this. And, I mean, is that something that happened pretty quickly and pretty organically, like, I guess, because of the community within the RCA? Yeah, there were two, there were sort of two aspects and they were both community driven that, that really made the space turn into what it is. And the first one was concern for my, for my fellow painters at the RCA, the people that I was directly on the program with, but well, I guess it was actually also sort of cross-disciplinary. We had put together a little Zoom philosophy study group called Rupture, and it was uh, was headed by Jonathan Miles and um, myself and another painter, Emily Krauss. And, sh and one of the things that we did was we brought together, um, we had people from sculpture and architecture anyway. When we got together, we realized that our Zoom meetings where we were talking about philosophy and having a glass of wine were sort of saving our sanity because it was our only connection, but the Zoom thing was killing us um, and we couldn't, we couldn't get together. So first was this idea of opening the space to, to anyone, to, to, to anyone that needed it in order to show. Um, and, and it wasn't about establishing a gallery. It was literally just about, here's a window, see what your work looks like, hang your work and let people look at it. Because it's making art you know, in a vacuum is, is really great if you've chosen to be in that back, vacuum to withdraw so that you can have a generative part of your practice. But when no one ever puts eyes on your work, it it's, can be a little bit painful and the, the work sort of is existing kind of trembling in the dark there. like do I exist? And it's, it, I don't know, it's a strange relationship we get into with our work. I mean, it's become so like, it's it like public this... art. That's, that's, that's a whole other thing, which is individuals basically producing public art by sticking them in, you know, the, the window. And I think there was a lot of people doing that, um, which was yes. kind of great. And it gave people like a destination to walk. Like, actually, a lot of people walk with their like headphones on, they're rushing, to, navigating through all these crowds of people. And even if they've lived in an area like where you're saying down in down in uh, Hampton Wick, like 
for they may never have even looked at like a window but with less people more time and like going on a conscious so that's walk exactly that's exactly what happened was that people were walking by this front door this front place that i didn't rent just the landlord was letting me put stuff in it and they were like when are you going to open are you going to have open hours and i thought oh i don't really want people in my space this is my private space back here and then i thought that's not true. I like the buzz of energy. I work more when other people are working around me. I need my solitude, but I, I need that generative energy adjacent. I need mm. to be energy adjacent. How can I do that? Um, especially when there were no PVs at that time and no shows to travel into. So what happened was I, um, I put out an open call and the first person that answered it was this woman, Steffi, who um, works as a manager for a thrift store. And she does this sustainable fashion thing where she's dressing mannequins in talking about recycling clothing and not throwing clothes away in slow fashion and all this stuff. And she said, I'd, excuse me, I'd like to do an exhibit. And I was like, fine, that's great. You know what I mean? Somebody wants to put something in the window. I don't care, <laughs> it's my window now. So she built this huge, it was her first time ever having kind of space like this. And mm. she, she, I, I told her, my goal is just that you take whatever you would normally do and push it, mm. like maybe push it till it breaks, but that's what, and so you learn that's, that's the only like request that I have for people using the space is take a risk. Mm -hmm. um, and so she did, she filled the whole entire front gallery with all kinds of cool textiles and wrappings. And she had a little PV and she had three people come. I'm trying to and, find uh, this on, the, on your site. I don't think it's up. I think it was before, um, before then. I, yeah, I can send it to you. I, it was I'll before it, we I'll linked it. Scroll back on your Instagram and see if I can share it on the screen. Yeah, well. it's definitely in there. Um, it's, um, it, it was wonderful to have her. And, uh, from there, we put, um, we just sort of opened it up and, and I, I took around little, um, so that my, so basically, let me just explain this, the shop front has a really long corridor that comes into the back. And then the studio has a big outdoor corridor courtyard that has a, like a perspex covering. So it's an indoor yeah. outdoor space which also works for us for COVID. Also, it's very leaky in my studio because it's an old antiques shop. So even when everything is closed, there's still like, you can feel the breeze. So with all this space, I realized that I could have people back here in the courtyard as soon as we got it cleaned up and stuff like that. So we sort of incrementally took it over. And then also my studio is floating in a circle of other people's back gardens. Mm -hmm. So I could, my music up kind of without really bugging people too much. And then I realized that I probably should let my neighbors know what I'm doing. Like, why is there music in their back garden at 11 o'clock at night when yeah. I'm painting? So I just, I had my daughter go around and kind of flyer the 100 closest buildings and sort of let everybody know that I've moved in and invite them all to a community party. So my first opening I did by paper. <laughs> not by art SVP. Yeah, that's, that's fine. And we, and we just, well, but I mean, this is what led us to needing it. So I thought maybe we'd have four or five people come over. I put out a couple of buckets of beer and just sort of open the doors. And we had like 30 people walk through in Hampton Wick. They were here for four and a half hours. They, they drank everything that we put out. We just turned up the radio and it was amazing. People were telling me, you know, I've lived here for 30 years. This person lives six doors away from me. I've never met them. They lived here for 20 years. This person is an actor. This person conducts a symphony. This person is a poet, you know? And so it started with the, the footfall community that wasn't necessarily interested in buying art, but was attracted to talking near it. They wanted to connect with each other in an environment that had this artistic sensation around mm. it. You know what I mean? Um, like my aunt's house, I guess you want to go somewhere where there's a bunch of cool art and sit down and have a conversation. Yeah. So that's what's happened recently is that our community and what I tell all the artists that show here is welcome everybody in. I don't care if they have a buggy. I don't care if they're 102. I don't care if they don't speak English. I don't care. Like people who, who look in and express interest in the art, welcome them in and have a conversation with them. 
you know, make, there's always a cup of tea back here. And what's been amazing about that is that on our latest uh, opening for coping in color, uh, it was the coldest night of the year and, and raining or hailing, you know, just recently. Mm. And we had, um, I don't know, 70 something people sign up for the event. And we had, um, I think a total of 65 people come, but it wasn't, uh, all off of the um, their bookings for the opening. A lot of them were off of bookings just to come because I ran an open studio at the same time. Yeah. So what happened was our community, our local community, came here and showed up and brought friends and brought their friends from Richmond and brought their friends from you know kind of all. So the 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 com- it, it's expanding. I don't. Yeah, it's expanding, but it's it's expanding. It's not that people don't want to see the show. It's that people come to see the show and they also come just because they know that whatever is here, they're going to enjoy themselves connecting and listening to the jazz, which is probably sung by one of their friends or some local person. And so that's it's become this very cool thing. Um, I think through those, through letting go of, like basically you you asked me in one of your questions uh, that you emailed to me, how is the art world changing or how is the, what's the responsibility of the artist to help the world change, yeah. the art world change? And I think what I'm hearing from artists as they're showing here and having this different kind of experience is that they feel like as they, as emerging artists, as they produce work and go to shows and go to support each other, that, that, they're enjoying going to look at work, but they're not enjoying the lack of the personal and the intimate because that's been so highlighted by this last Mm. year of us kind of missing each other. People want a somatic experience. They want to, they want something in personal in person, but they're afraid of, of these huge social situations. So they want something intimate. They want something connected. They want something where they have permission to engage and take their time and speak. They want to be honored and respected for their opinion. They want their opinion to matter no matter how long they've been around art or if this is the first time they're ever like stopping to look at a painting. Hmm. I want to feel welcome. I mean, so basically like as soon as I picked up your booking thing, what happened was I was able to take all of that, knowing those things, right, that people want to feel welcome. And I was able to sort of flex that invite list and and know Hmm. how like, okay, people, there's only going to be a couple people at five, there's going to be a bunch of people at six, I better serve something at seven, I better buy three more bottles of gin for 730. Yeah, yeah. You know, and so it it enabled me to sort of see what the rhythm of the space change was. And yeah, and how much how much were people just coming from here? Not just coming, but how much was my local my growing local community that use this as their community social base? Hmm. And who's coming? Now we have collectors coming down from Devon and and those kinds of things. So so where and so I'm I think that the space with your tool are helping me kind of interweave these different needs, the disparate needs, the community wanting something vibrant, the artists wanting to show, the different kinds of artists and different kinds of arts wanting to interact with each other. And all of those artists wanting, desperately wanting an audience to see like, how is this received Hmm. without it being like the one show of their lifetime? (laughs) Yeah, yeah. No, and I think I think that that's that's a lot of that's a lot of. Um, I mean, I've spoken and seen loads of artists put on their own shows and like have the guts to do it and be like, just like take take over a space and do a pop up for like a week, you know. And it's like, and new artists, like artists who'd never done anything before, you know. And that, and again, actually, I mean, with the like a lot of the London art schools, they didn't even do shows during the pandemic. You know, there's a bit of an uproar. And we we're, we're obviously trying to help them and get people to like be like, hey, you can run your own show. Um, and you know that was people... huge, by the way. We did uh, we did four four individual solo shows of graduates that had been canceled, and two group shows. Chelsea College of Arts held their grad show here, mm. and the Kingston Kingston Fine Arts BA 
were the first students that showed here. We uncanceled a bunch of their yeah, grad shows. Yeah, exactly. And I think that that's, that's so cool. And I mean, I think that that really puts, you know, like you guys on the map. Um, I mean, I guess I guess it's like a whole, this is, this is why I kind of likened you to Stacey McCormick at the beginning of the call, because I could just see like, you know, she, she really is like, she she's an artist but now like when you meet her it's just like she is just like a like a gallerist a curator she's just like do she doesn't have you know and i said to her like we know well, what are you and she was just like well, i just do all of them like you know and and i think that that's really exciting to see you know um artists running spaces for artists yeah is it's, it's yeah. like you know if i was to set up a space for artists i would be like probably too commercially minded I probably wouldn't get it right I wouldn't be like doing the art myself so I wouldn't be feeling the same like emotions but because you're you're doing all of that it's very easy for you to like I, I mean not only just be, be like kind of arms open and like welcoming to, to to these different groups and kind of bringing people together but also yeah just understanding like the actual difficulties of what these people have gone through and I guess that the other thing is like by seeing I mean I could ask you some like boring questions I was going to like you know how has your audience grown like from like how big's your mailing list how are you doing this stuff but I mean it doesn't really seem relevant to be honest because obviously it's just growing kind of day by day the it just sounds like the reach is getting bigger and bigger um yeah but it that that's that's so like interesting to see that happen organically like with word of mouth and like small step by step I mean I hope that like Art SVP provides like some kind of um yeah like some kind of way to, to kind of maybe measure that to a degree and i think it's, that's it's something not only we're looking that it, to it do provides, uh, to, to measure that sorry i didn't mean to step over you there yeah it 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 does give me a really strong indication from event to event how our community reach is growing and how the artist reach is growing but but more than that what it does is it i I think I really look at professional tools like um, as obstacle removers. So when I think if I want to, if my goal is to, is to go whatever here, you know, to this elite level of say skiing, I say, I say, yeah. <laughs> let's say it's just, because, yeah, you know, yeah. I don't know to pick something. Let's say that I wanted to be an examiner for the, professional ski instructors of America. So my my goal in doing that is to is to know what do I need to accomplish in order to get there. And so I tended to look around when I was going through that journey and say like okay, well what are people doing like you said like if you were going to make an art studio, what are people doing that are working in this way? Mm. So you can identify professional tools that way. And so for me a lot of it is like, okay, well, people that are are respected in the industry are um, prompt, punctual, they know what's going on, they they kind of have an idea of what to expect, they have a plan in place, like these sorts of things. So I don't, I really like the organic growth of this place having its own energy. So I don't, I know that I don't want to run it. I, I don't take commission on anything mm. that gets sold out of here, it all goes to the artist. And <laughs> I don't charge for people to show here. We just go through a, a sort of a, a rigorous screening process about are you being connected? Are you open? Are you risk averse or not? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, do you want to get in here and be kind of juicy and, and really connect with people in general? Or are you just trying to get the attention of one particular kind of gallery so you can become a superstar? That's not what we're doing. I mean, that might happen, but that's not the point of the show. Yeah. So when i when i look at those kind of professional tools help create time right so when i'm i'm a painter i'm trying to run my own practice so i want to connect with and nurture other collaborative uh, opportunities and artists but i don't really have time to be a gallerist so getting your tool allows me to put into place like a huge range of things that normally would take forever using a Google calendar and emails back and forth and creating a spreadsheet and an open document and all this stuff. So the, the high level of professionalism that the Art SVP platform gives to me is that all the automated emails go out. I sound and look professional. I'm in line with other 
are events that are happening in London. So people recognize your branded and trust it, right? So it just sort of, it says, this is a real space. It really does exist. We really are serious about what we're doing, even though it's very different looking yeah, yeah. from everybody else that's using it. We're still yeah. like, it's the, it's your platform is actually the thing that kind of says, yeah, we're actually playing in this game. We just, our game just looks really different. Yeah. Yours. I mean, I often say to people, it's like, really you know whether whether you force people to book whether it's like a requirement or whether it's something like it's a nice to have just like being able to book is just like the things that you've just pointed out time saver so you don't have people like if you have a book now button next to your phone number people that's going to reduce your phone calls by half right just like straight away i personally would remove the phone number but if if you it's really hard to get hold of me yeah if if, if you um you know, and then so that that's one aspect. The other aspect is just showing that you're open, you know, like, especially in this climate where things are open and shut or whatever. It's just like, oh, well, if there's an option to book and I really want to commit. And and the third thing is you, you're going to get higher level of footfall if you basically let some people book. Because if I'm on your website and there's an option to book, I might just quickly think, oh, what am I doing on Saturday? Whereas if they, there isn't that option, then I'm just going to go, Oh, okay, cool. I'll go there next time. I'm in down down in that part of the world. Well, right, so right. It, it it's just it's only it can only be. I I don't like it being like a barrier, like you said. So we really encourage people to like use it how they want. But um, I think that sums it up. Like it's very nice hearing you say it unprompted. <laughs> it's essential for me because in between shows, it's my studio. So I'm not open to the public. I don't have regular open hours and I can't. So I actually couldn't really exist as a viable business without some sort of book. I mean, I could exist, but it wouldn't work kind of without you guys in a certain way because I'm able to change everything and I use you to tell the world that I'm open or closed. And so the door out to the front is shut and there's a big sign on the wall that says, don't ring the bell, don't knock, make an appointment. Like we're not open. This is a working studio. It's a very mm. don't come in place because otherwise I would never get anything done yeah. ever because when the delivery guy comes back, I'm like, hi, do you want a cup of tea? You know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that so that's, that's something that we're hoping to spend. Like, obviously we've been, we're a startup, so we've been very like focused on like trying to just get, get, get ourselves off the ground. But um, yeah. We, we are really hoping that kind of come 2022, we're going to be able to basically offer many more artists, like a kind of lightweight version that allows them to like spin stuff up quickly. And the open studios, I mean, last year I, I did do a partnership with a open studios kind of, which is for like one month in Oxfordshire. And we had 50 artists use it for like one week, for, for one or two weeks. And I was I, I didn't know who was using it, but I just went to one of these things and people were like, oh, you know, what do you do? And I said, and they were going, oh, my God, you know, you've like saved us, um, yes. which we didn't realize yeah. because it's because it's sometimes Isn't difficult it? to, to re appreciate that. Like from where we're sitting, we're behind a computer, so we're not actually out there seeing it in real life. I mean, we've only been I've only been like we, we've operated like it, it, it just last week. I went to a private view where you had to be booked via our test VP. And there was, it was absolutely packed, literally everyone being checked in. And it's just like so nice for us to like see that in person. Whereas every day that's happening on our platform, but we never see it. So person, it, yeah. it's, it, it's very and difficult for us to know, but I think, I think the value to uh, an artist getting 10 bookings a week is often a higher level of value than a, a gallery in Mayfair getting a hundred bookings for one event, you know, I, I yeah. or an art fair processing 25,000 bookings through us. So it, yeah. it, the value to those individual people is, is kind of, it, it doesn't, it's not about number of bookings. It's not about that. It's about the professionalism. It's about how you use the tool. And I think you've used it in so many different ways. And I mean, I guess that, that brings like there's a whole bunch. I mean, we, yeah, you did tell me, you warned me that we could talk for ages. So, I mean, I'll kind of wrap it up here for this bit. Um, but I think like there's so much more that, you know, we, we're, we're looking forward to releasing 
and actually while we've been on this call we've just released a whole new feature um i just got a text saying it's live um but that's like for invitations so we can now generate individual invitation links that are like basically personalized so you could say you know put in someone's name and email and then that link can only be used by them they don't even like it's one less thing for them to do they don't even have to enter their name or email now if you have that so wait that's amazing yeah and, and that would be so good for my community like they would be so thrilled to have their own well it's link. just like that's, personalized yeah i mean it, yeah it's, it's amazing I mean, that's the whole point right it's like what are you doing you're relation that art fair the, first of all i just want to say that i think it's incredible that your tool can scale between twenty five thousand bookings and me and, <laughs> yeah. and be super effective for both of us that's huge that's tech that's well, tech <laughs> it's not us but um yeah but i'm you know what i mean yeah the team. and um the other thing though is that i think um oh my god i derailed myself completely was i saying twenty five thousand bookings um the, oh, I'm so sorry. Don't worry. Like, just completely. No, no, don't worry. I mean, we've been talking for an hour now, so I mean, we're probably we probably kind of. But yeah, I think it's about. Um, I mean, we we're we're thrilled to have the likes of the likes of you using Art SVP. I think you put it through its paces, and like your feedback is like <laughs> honestly as valuable, if not more valuable, than many of the, many of the like larger, so to speak, uh, people we work with because you know, the feedback that you give is actually, for us, that is scalable because there's there's mm -hmm. more individual artists. Like, we can take feedback from Fair X, but they're going to have a very unique set of problems that's not really relevant to lots and lots of people. And that's really where we, we want to go is to be able to provide, like, everybody with the same level of professionalism and time-saving and et cetera as, as a bigger gallery or art fair. Um, and so it's trying to share that knowledge, which is almost as important as, as, as like providing the tech. And so I think that like, you know, yeah. people just being able to tune in maybe and listen to like what you're saying. I mean, personally for me, it's really inspiring. Like I don't have a boring conversation with people uh, and I'm talking to them about like bookings, you know, it's like, <laughs> so it's nice to record one and um, I'm looking forward to sharing it first with my team and you. And then, um, yes, and we can definitely like let's let's catch up in in like hopefully I'll kind of get down to Kingston either this year or yeah. in the new year. Um, but I mean, we could we could talk about all of these other events you've got planned, these workshops. I mean, the workshops sound great. I think you've a lot of the questions I wanted to ask you about them, you've summed up, but essentially your workshops that like you just really go in with like open arms and you basically make you know I think it's like it feels to me a lot like it's like a about letting people find their own confidence but by you basically saying like pushing them a little bit in a kind of like yeah. you say everything uh, like in a kind of environment where there's conversation and people being open and trying new things and just everyone pushing each other a little bit but in a non nasty way and I think your exactly. your workshops sound just exactly. like that. And I think that, I, I mean, I'm imagining that this is potentially the business model that makes this, allows you to continue doing this right. into the future. And so it'd be really interesting yeah, to maybe do a more like succinct interview with you about that or just to like write up how that, how that whole thing goes, because I think that that's a model that other people could also use. Um, so hopefully we maybe we make this a regular thing and we like catch up like every every few months um i mean it's really exciting hearing from you and um yeah i'm gonna do the um the workshop over the summer i'm gonna do an immersive i'm gonna do a two-week version and a, i think a three-week version that are going to be significantly more expensive um but it really is we're gonna con and then it'll end with a show and a pv so that you know and it'll be across, so we'll have sort of beginner artists and people that are emerging that just want to work on and establish their practice or develop or deepen their practice. Anyway, we can. I would love to talk to you about it. That'll be in the summer. Yeah, and um, um, we should. Yeah. We should. We will. I will be in touch. Um, but thank you so much for your time. I'm going to write this up in the next week or so, and uh, I'll obviously send this across to you. But that was that was super. That was really super. So thank you very much. It was great. I'm gonna do a, really I'm gonna do a wave, and then I'm gonna stay on the call and continue talking to you.
Thank you. Okay. Bye.